Levitation or transvection in the paranormal context is the rising of a human body and other objects into the air by mystical means or meditation. Some parapsychology and religious believers interpret alleged instances of levitation as the result of supernatural action of psychic power or spiritual energy. The scientific community states there is no evidence that levitation exists and alleged levitation events are explainable by natural causes such as magic trickery, illusion, and hallucination. Topic: <inaudible> Religious views. Various religions have claimed examples of levitation amongst their followers. This is generally used either as a demonstration of the validity or power of the religion, or as evidence of the holiness or adherence to the religion of the particular levitator. Topic: <inaudible> Buddhism. <inaudible> <inaudible> It is recounted as one of the miracles of Buddha that Gautama Buddha walked on water levitating crossed legs over a stream in order to convert a Brahmin to Buddhism. Yogi Milarepa, a Vajrayana Buddhist guru, was rumored to have possessed a range of additional abilities during levitation, such as the ability to walk, rest and sleep, however, such were deemed as occult powers. It is normal IDDHI power mentioned in Buddhist Pali canons sitting cross-legged he flies through the air like a winged bird. <laughs> Christianity Jesus walks on the water to meet his disciples who are in a boat. Initially they are afraid, thinking he is a spirit but he quells their fears. Saint Bessarion of Egypt d. 466 walked across the waters of a river Nile. Saint Mary of Egypt also walked across a river, according to Saint Zosimus. Saint Francis of Assisi is recorded as having been suspended above the earth, often to a height of three, and often to a height of four cubits about 1.3 to 1.8 meters. Saint Alphonsus Liguori, when preaching at Faja, was lifted before the eyes of the whole congregation several feet from the ground. Saint Joseph of Cupertino, mystic, born the 17th of June 1603, died at Osimo the 18th of September 1663. Feast the 18th of September, reportedly levitated high in the air for extended periods of more than an hour on many occasions. Saint Teresa of Avila, born in Avila, Spain, March 28, 1515, died in Alba, October 4, 1582, claimed to have levitated at a height of about a foot and a half for an extended period somewhat less than an hour, in a state of mystical rapture. She called the experience a spiritual visitation. Saint Martin de Porres, December 9, 1579 to November 3, 1639, claimed psychic powers of bilocation, being able to pass through closed doors, teleportation, and levitation. Girolamo Savonarola, sentenced to death, allegedly rose off the floor of his cell into mid-air and remained there for some time. Seraphim of Sarov (1759–1833), Russian Orthodox saint, had a gift to levitate over the ground for some time. This was witnessed by many educated people of his time, including the Emperor Alexander I. A young paralyzed man brought into his cell saw Seraphim raised from the ground during a fervent prayer. Likewise, four Divyavo sisters saw him walking above the grass lifted up from the air. Mariam Bawardi, Little Arab, 
1846–1878, a Carmelite nun, who died in Bethlehem in 1878, and frequently experienced ecstasies, was seen levitating more than once by others, for example, in the garden of the monastery during times of private prayer, when living in the Carmelite monastery at Pau, in France. Padre Pio (1887–1968), Catholic saint who had stigmata, is said to have been able to levitate, as well as being able to bilocate. Demonic levitation in Christianity. Clara Germana Selle, a young South African girl, in 1906 reportedly levitated in a rigid position. The effect was apparently only reversed by the application of holy water, leading to belief that it was caused by demonic possession. Magdalena de la Cruz (1487–1560), a Franciscan nun of Cordova, Spain. Margaret Rule, a young Boston girl in the 1690s who was believed to be harassed by evil forces shortly after the Salem witchcraft trials, reportedly levitated from her bed in the presence of a number of witnesses. Topic: <laughs> Gnosticism. Simon Magus, a Gnostic who claimed to be an incarnation of God as conceived by the Gnostics, reportedly had the ability to levitate, along with many other magical powers. <laughs> <laughs> Hellenism It was believed in Hellenism, the pagan religion of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, on the testimony of Philostratus that upon his death, Apollonius of Tyana underwent heavenly assumption by levitating into Elysium. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism In Hinduism, it is believed that some Hindu mystics and gurus who have who have achieved certain spiritual powers called siddhis are able to levitate. In Sanskrit, the power of levitation is called lagaman lightness or dardora siddhi the frog power. Yogananda's book Autobiography of a Yogi has accounts of Hindu yogis who levitated in the course of their meditation. Yogi Subaya Pulavar was reported to have levitated into the air for four minutes in front of a crowd of 150 witnesses on June 6, 1936. He was seen suspended horizontally several feet above the ground, in a trance, lightly resting his hand on top of a cloth covered stick. Polivar's arms and legs could not be bent from their locked position once on the ground. Shirdi Sai Baba, an Indian yogi, is described in the Sri Sai Sacharitra to have mastered the art of levitation while sleeping. <inaudible> <inaudible> Judaism Levitation has been described in Jewish text many times by use of either magic or non-magical means. Levitation by magic was depicted in Jewish texts to be practiced by Balaam who lived at the time of Moses. Magic involves directly ordering the spirits to carry out tasks thereby ignoring God. Instead of submission to God, self-pride and ego of the individual is used to order the spirits to carry out tasks such as levitation. Levitation by non-magical means was practiced by many Jewish sages throughout the ages. As such, the forehead is the most important part of the body and is responsible for the source of energy, bringing about the levitation. The Baal Shem Tov HBLSM tube who lived during the early 18th century, was told about when he snapped his fingers, his chariot and horses floated tefa 8 to 10 centimeters off the ground and moved at great speed, jumping on mountains and hills, until the Baal Shem Tov reached his destination. Levitation was used for long-range transport of individuals who mastered this form of transportation. However levitation as such was not a means to an end. 
One can not learn levitation but rather a possibility that was made available due to a state of mind that was in complete love of God and keeping his commandments mitzvah to the letter. Levitation is usually carried out by several means. Using the wind, Solomon is told to get from God the ability to command everything that God created, including the wind, which mostly used to fly a carpet, no matter the weight of what's on it. Using one of secret names of God, Abishai was told to use one of secret names of God to prevent David from falling after brother of Goliath threw him up to the air, creating the result of levitation. Many Jewish rabbis and sages throughout the generations also used a form of cupized hdir, kefitzit hadarik, or leap, which is a form of teleportation where each step taken was a distance of several miles, Persh literally. Horseshoe. Similar as ancient Iranian measure of distance, see Parasang, about four miles. The theory of levitation is explained by being in a state of mind where a person is abstract and spiritual in relation to the material or physical world on which he stands. When abstract or spiritual inspiration and thought grows to be sufficiently strong, the abstract observation becomes physical and concrete thereby enabling the person to stand on what others normally see as abstract and imaginary. To the levitator, the abstract is as real as the ground and earth is to others. The rabbis have decreed that a height of three cubits from the ground is an abstract perimeter in which anything below that height is considered ground level. This decree has halachic legal implications. Observing this decree to the letter enables levitation at a height of three cubits by materializing this abstract perimeter to be physical and concrete as is from the standpoint of the levitator. Topic. Levitation by mediums Many mediums have claimed to have levitated during seances, especially in the 19th century in Britain and America. Many have been shown to be frauds, using wires and stage magic tricks. Daniel Dungla's home, a prolific and well-documented levitator of himself and other objects, was said by spiritualists to levitate outside of a window. Skeptics have disputed such claims. The researchers Joseph McCabe and Trevor H. Hall exposed the levitation of home as nothing more than him moving across a connecting ledge between two iron balconies. The magician Joseph Rin gave a full account of fraudulent behavior observed in a seance of Usapia Palladino and explained how her levitation trick had been performed. Milborn Christopher summarized the exposure. Joseph F. Rin and Warner C. Pine, clad in black coveralls, had crawled into the dining room of Columbia Professor Herbert G. Lord's house while a Palladino seance was in progress. Positioning themselves under the table, they saw the medium's foot strike a table leg to produce raps. As the table tilted to the right, due to pressure of her right hand on the surface, they saw her put her left foot under the left table leg. Pressing down on the table top with her left hand and up with her left foot under the table leg to form a clamp, she lifted her foot and levitated the table from the floor. The levitation trick of the medium Jack Weber was exposed by the magician Julian Proskauer. According to Proskauer he would use a telescopic reaching rod attached to a trumpet to levitate objects in the seance room. The physicist Edmund Edward Fournier Dalby investigated the medium Kathleen Golier at many sittings and concluded that no paranormal phenomena such as levitation had occurred with Golier and stated he had found evidence of fraud. Dalby had claimed the ectoplasm substance in the photographs of Golier from her seances were made from muslin. Topic. In photography, 
A person photographed while bouncing may appear to be levitating. This optical illusion is used by religious groups and by spiritualist mediums, claiming that their meditation techniques allow them to levitate in the air. You can usually find telltale signs in the photography indicating that the subject was in the act of bouncing, like blurry body parts, a flailing scarf, hair being suspended in the air, etc. Topic. Levitation in popular culture Topic. Literature Barnaby Smith A novel by Daniel Martin Eckhart Incidents in My Life Autobiography by Daniel Dunglas Home Mr. Vertigo novel by Paul Auster Topic. Film The Exorcist Directee by Friedkin, William 1973. The Boy Who Could Fly Directed by Nick Castle 1986. Topic. See also Indian Rope Trick List of topics characterized as pseudoscience Mysticism Occult <laughs>